Admit it, you thought this thumbnail and title was clickbait, but it's not. This entire video is about designing creating this third leg so I could properly tighten my race car nuts and stop the wheels falling off. Before we get to the main topic, a quick update. I did hear back from Motorsports Australia and there was some good news and pretty much mostly good news. Firstly, the documents that I had been sent from sister car owner Greg were sufficient and I can type in the code for this car on my logbook application without going through any extra processes. Secondly, I can't use the M8 bolts. I have to use the eyelets, but I'm not allowed to weld on a nut. But I was prompted to find the correct bushing that I needed with the 7 16th thread that could be welded to the chassis. And the other piece of good news is I am allowed to weld it myself, assuming the inspector is happy with the result. The fuel cell I was looking at, customized to match my filler, as well as the aluminium can that I previously showed, have both been ordered and that means I've got a bit of a wait until they arrive and I can fit them, pour the seat and get the car on track. So that means in the meantime I need to solve some other problems. And the problem I'm solving in this video was something I just didn't think about until I owned the car. Unlike a road car that has several wheel nuts, my race car has a single center nut per corner, kind of like in Formula 1. The threads are actually opposite from the left and right hand side of the car, but we always need to twist towards the front of the car to loosen and towards the rear of the car to tighten. Obviously the wheels not falling off is kind of important, so the first step was to find the right size socket to fit my nut. Calipers wouldn't reach, so I 3D printed two different templates to see which one fitted best, and funnily enough it was in between these two which ended up being 1 and 5 8 inches, and this socket cost me around 60 bucks. Now taking off the wheel nuts, that's the easy part. You can easily get a rattle gun, electric or pneumatic, that has sufficient torque to undo them. But doing them back up, well that needs to be exact, otherwise you risk, well, the wheels falling off. I contacted the previous owner and he did in fact say that the wheel nuts were starting to come loose when he was driving on track, which sounds absolutely terrifying. They kept on upping the torque on the nuts, finding the magic number to be 350 newton meters. With that in mind, I went shopping. The previous owner recommended that I get some sort of anti-seize, and my mechanic friend Matt recommended this brand, so that one was easy. Item 2 was also easy, but quite expensive. An enormous torque wrench, 3 quarter inch drive, and capable of 1000 newton meters. A benefit here being that it was 1.2 meters long, which should mean that the amount of force required from me, even for 350 newton meters, wasn't that much. The downside was the price, 600 bucks, but there was just no way to avoid buying this. Because you're not meant to use this to loosen the nuts, I needed to buy a breaker bar on top of it, one meter long, and again, a three quarter inch drive to match the socket. And luckily this one was much cheaper at only $143. But not every problem can be solved by spending money, because now we arrive at the real problem. And that's that with a single center nut, every time you try and apply torque, the whole car just rolls back and forth. There's certainly no handbrake on a formula race car like this. When I shot the deep dive video, I got Dave to press down on the pedal so I could undo the nut. But I think I would be silly to set this up, so I was always relying on having someone with me, either in the garage or at the track, just to be able to loosen and do up the wheel nuts. I therefore wanted an independent solution. We always try to start with simple solutions, so what about putting some ramps either side of the wheel so the whole car can't roll? Unfortunately, the amount of torque required to tighten these nuts was way too much, and as you can see, the whole car will ride up the ramp and it will fall off the other side if I keep on pushing, so this one's a no-go. There is another solution that actually works quite well, and that is to introduce a clamp between the brake pedal and the front of the chassis. It's a little bit awkward with the brake fluid reservoir in the way, but we can successfully simulate someone in the car pressing the brake pedal and holding it in to stop all of the wheels from turning. And as a proof of concept, this was quite effective. I was able to torque the rear nuts up to 350 newton meters successfully. But this wasn't to be a long-term solution, and you can see why by looking at this picture. The only way to provide enough access for this clamp is to remove the entire front section of the bodywork. We're talking more than a dozen fasteners and probably a two-person job to lift it off safely. So essentially what I wanted was a way to depress the brake without being in the car, and my inspiration came from a set of vice grips, which have an over-center mechanism. I've actually made a whole video on over-center mechanisms and how you can design to use them on the main channel. So please check out the link in the description. Let me explain the plan with a side view of the cockpit. The green line we see here is the default position for the brake pedal. 
and the aim was to make a pivoting artificial leg that rested upon it. Just like a human leg, when it extended straight, the pedal would be pushed in. And like any other over-center mechanism, when it pushed just past center, the leg would keep wanting to bend that way, so if we could prevent that, it would lock into position. Just like how vice grips go past the tightest point, and then lock the other way into position. The leg components would be easy, as I had a bunch of 20 profile extrusion left over, some of it new and some of it from recycled 3D printers. What was going to be harder was creating an anchor for the whole thing, highlighted on the right hand side here with the blue circle. Fortunately, there was a nice opening built into the chassis that was clear of the seat and triangulated for strength. My plan was to make a T section that would go through the larger part of this triangle and then slide back, meaning any force pushing in the opposite direction of the brake pedal would lock the whole thing further into position. And here's the CAD for the actual anchor, designed to be milled from 6mm aluminium. And as you'd expect, I 3D printed a prototype version of this to test the fit, seen here with the M8 bolt in place to finish the anchor. And here's how it works. The bolt goes through the widest part of the opening and then the whole lot moves backwards. We've got a nice pivot point for the end of the leg and any load going back from the pedal only locks it in tighter, yet it's still easy to remove. Next up, I prepared some 2040 extrusion, drilling holes in either end, and I've got their position consistent because I used a 3D printed drilling jig. 3D printing is really awesome for little tools like this. It slides in from the end and ensures all of the holes are in the right place. With the first part of the leg bolted into position, I put the anchor into place and revealed my first mishap. You can kind of see the problem when looking down towards the pedals, but it's much more obvious when looking from the side, and that's that the leg was fouling the steering column. Here we can see the steering column in purple, and the original leg measurements shown in yellow. Everything's fine until the leg goes down, and then the pivot point rubs on the steering column. But fortunately this one is a very easy fix. We keep the same total leg length, but the proportions change to have a short section next to the pedal, and then when it straightens to push in the pedal, the pivot point in the middle is nowhere near the steering column. So an easy fix, just install a longer length of 2040 extrusion on the anchor side. Now here the pedal side is obviously way too long and that's temporary, but you can see that that has the range of motion it needs without the junction coming anywhere near the steering column. I iterated the anchor design a couple of times trying to get it in the ideal position, before milling the final version from 6mm aluminium using the Carvera desktop CNC. This part, like all of those I make on this machine, turned out beautifully. It's not a cheap machine, but compared to paying someone else to manufacture it, the Carvera is an ideal solution. To finish off the anchor, I printed several TPU, which is like rubber, bushings and covers. These are printed completely solid, so they're quite firm, but they still have enough flex to go over the bolt. The same goes for these sleeves, which are tight enough to form a nice interference fit and stay in place. Now you might have noticed these three small holes when I was designing the anchor, and that was to interface with another solid TPU piece, this time a skinny one, with the three holes used to bolt it into position. Just a little insurance against damage. I also designed and printed another solid TPU piece. This super chunky stopper is designed to attach to the underside of the extrusion using T-nuts, close to the anchor point, so when it's locked into position, it cushions the contact with the chassis, which is this section, and don't worry, there is steel underneath the sheet metal, circled here with blue. And that was enough to finalize the anchor end of this mechanism. But what about the pedal end? That still needed resolving. My initial idea, prototyped here with 3D printed plastic, was to have this articulating ankle that would clip onto the pedal. But remember, I won't have access from the view the camera is seeing right now, so I figured that might be a little bit too fiddly trying to align and get that to clip onto the pedal when looking through from the cockpit. Idea number two was to keep things super simple and have a pair of bearings that would push along the pedal arm. This would be much easier to locate from inside the cockpit and the way it rolled helped protect the pedal as well. But the main problem here was that this didn't attach to the pedal in any secure way and the bearings meant that the whole mechanism was likely to roll off the bottom rather than pushing upwards and latching onto the top. I was also concerned that it would be hard to get the exact length I needed to make everything lock into position accurately. So I checked my spare parts and found this ball screw and implementing this into the whole thing would allow me to twist it in and out to extend or shorten the length as required. Ball screws have no backlash and as you can see, there's ball bearings circulating inside, so they're quite strong when it comes to axial load. The short part of the leg would need to be converted to 4040. I had a piece of old 3D printer, just perfect for this, but to use it, I would need to machine two more adapters for either end. 
The first has four holes to match the 4040 extrusion, and then two holes to match the ball screw mount. It's firstly bolted on to the 4040, and then the ball screw slides down the hole in the middle, before the final two bolts go into the threaded section of the adapter to hold everything together. The second adapter has a 10mm bore, and that matches up to the 10mm shaft at the centre of the ball screw. This is meant to be an interference fit, a really tight one in fact. And the only way to get the two parts together is to heat up the new adapter to make it expand, and then use a hammer to bash the ball screw into its position. This is totally not coming off without further bashing, but that's okay, I don't want any wobble or play. I then have a final 3D printed component that interfaces with the pedal as well as protecting the surface. It slots over the top, and then a series of bolts join the two together. With the larger of these two bolts being structural, because they go the whole way through the plastic, and they prevent the plastic from breaking under load. To finish off, I tapped a thread in the ends of any of the extrusion that didn't already have it, and screwed on some more 3D printed parts, this time some simple caps, to take away the sharp edges of the extrusion. Everything was then bolted together, hopefully for the final time, and I did things up pretty tight, the idea being that these joints can pivot under load, but they don't flail about when I'm trying to feed the whole thing down through the footwell. And here is the finished product. It took a lot of development, but I've arrived on a design which I'm quite happy with. We saw earlier how it locks into the chassis, but now the rubbery pieces will prevent scratching and any corrosion. The new pedal side locates onto the pedal without it slipping away, and the length of the whole mechanism can be fine-tuned by winding the ball screw back or forth to perfection. And of course when we're done, it folds back on itself to make for more compact storage. This is all great in theory, but we need to prove that it works in practice as well. Once the anchor is hooked into place, there's just enough room and visibility to look down from the cockpit and to hook the other end onto the bottom of the brake pedal. You can kneel down and use your hands, but I think the simplest way to use this is to reach in and step on the top of the closest arm. Here's a close-up of it in action. It extends outwards, presses in the pedal, and then goes past the center point, locking into position. If you were wondering if this is enough travel, of course that's adjustable with the ball screw, and how I've currently got it set pushes the pedal in plenty to be able to torque up the nuts. The wheel feels like it wants to rotate just a little bit, but in the end 350 newton meters is achieved. And when I'm done, I can use my hands or, more easily, just push down on the other side of the lever and everything will unlatch. I won't need to cut this end a little bit shorter once the seat is poured, but that's an easy modification. After a highly iterative design process, I finally have a solution that works. And the list got a little bit longer recently, so it's really nice to be able to cross off two items, and a third item bleeding the brakes, I'll be able to do by myself thanks to this as well. While I wait for the fuel cell to come from overseas, there's still some other items on the list that I can attend to, but in the meantime you might have noticed it's pretty dark in here. So I've got some fancy lighting, and you can see how that goes in a future video. Senna once famously said, if you no longer exhaust all of your disposable income on buying a race car, then you're no longer a racing driver. And I didn't want to upset any F1 legend, so that's exactly what I did. 